What is up guys, Dustin McDangles here with another video and if you guys are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are growing like crazy and we are looking to get to 750 subscribers before the new year so if you guys like anything hockey be sure to subscribe to the channel. Sorry I did not have the live episode yesterday. I was at the Hurricanes the Leafs game down in Raleigh, North Carolina. What a fun one it was sitting on the glass where the Leafs shoot twice ended up being a pretty decent finish to that game as the Leafs pulled away 3-1 but in today's episode we're going to be getting into my top 10 power rankings for this week which is week four of the NHL season or this past week week four of the NHL season we've got a little bit of a shake up from last week but without further ado let's go ahead get into it and take a look at my top 10 power rankings coming in at number 10 having taken care of business this past week only playing two games as they were overseas finally getting back into the win column after a little while away it is the Colorado Avalanche coming in at number 10 for us. They played solid hockey. They absolutely beat up on the Columbus Blue Jackets. A bunch of players getting involved with some scoring. Rantanen getting a hat trick in Finland. Awesome stuff for him. But when you take a look at it, they've got a pretty quiet week this upcoming week as well. Only two games, but they are both at home. Nashville and Carolina. Carolina being a tough team as I saw them in person. Very solid squad. And we'll take a look at the team stats as well to sort of back up everything that I'm saying with this team. McKinnon's been playing great hockey again. Ranton and McCarr. Natushkin has cooled off a little bit from his hot start at the start of the season, but still up there with 12 points. Very solid stuff from him. Devon Taves playing very big minutes on the back end, and their rookie, Ben Myers, does also have one point. Between the pipes, Georgiev has been pretty solid recently. 2-6-1 with a 9-2-5 save percentage. If he can keep that up, we could definitely definitely expect to see the Colorado Avalanche back into the top 10. Again, a light week on your screen right now coming up, but if they can win both games, they'll shoot themselves up in the division as they currently sit third behind the Jets and Dallas Stars for the Central. So expect a big week out of the Avalanche. They could go 2-0 and find themselves back in the top 10 next week, but we've got the Avalanche at number 10. Coming in at number 9, a solid week for, for themselves, having played some pretty decent hockey, continuing on from the previous week. They were in our top 10 last time, and they are back in it today. Actually, pretty sure they stayed in the same spot they did for me. Number 9, the Winnipeg Jets. Let's take a look at their stats. Again, they are just above the Colorado Avalanche. We will take a look at their previous week as well so you guys can see it on the screen. They beat Montreal and they beat Chicago. I'm double checking if they did play a Sunday game. They did lose in overtime to the Vegas Golden Knights, but we will see them potentially in just a little moment. They have they came off a nice 3-0 week. They went 2-1. This week, again, playing some lower competition other than the Vegas Golden Knights, a very solid team that they have out there. Taking a look at team stats on the board, Morrissey, it's it's not really too crazy. They don't have anybody above 15 points, but they have been playing solid chip and chase hockey. Morrissey leading the way in points, 11 points on the back end for him. He actually, all of them are 11 points. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, he has one goal. I thought he had... All 11 assists for his points. Pierre-Luc Dubois getting it done. Shifley Wheeler looks good. Again, Perfetti has been continuing his hot start. Hellebuck between the pipes, man. The other night against the Golden Knights, dude was making incredible save after incredible save. He's looking like the Vesna candidate of years past Hellebuck. He's got a 209 goals against average with a 936 save percentage. I'm more concerned about that save percentage. If he can continue to do what he's been doing between the pipes, taking a look at their schedule this upcoming week, they have some pretty solid competition, a battle for the division against the Dallas Stars at home, and then they go in the Pacific to play Calgary and Seattle. So big games, teams that will be in the hunt for a playoff spot after this upcoming week. I think we'll know a little bit more about the Winnipeg Jets moving forward as long as they can stay healthy and Hullabuck is able to continue doing what he has been doing and maybe get a little bit more goal scoring from Connor, uh, from Shifley, Wheeler, getting those points up there a little bit more. Expect the Winnipeg Jets to be in it as the season goes on for a playoff spot, but we've got them in at number nine. Coming in at number eight, a little 
little bit of a surprise team for me this year, having really blown my expectations out of the water, and that is the Seattle Kraken breaking into the top 10 for the first time this season for my power rankings in at number 8. They had a 3-0 and week, and taking a look at their schedule again, they didn't play well i guess you consider you could consider minnesota and pittsburgh some slouch teams this year but in years past all three of those teams were top teams they beat calgary 5-4 in it not a shootout but a shootout in the sense of goals crazy goal scoring game nine goals total they beat minnesota 4-0 they came back and beat the pittsburgh penguins 3-2 they've got a pretty big week upcoming Uh, They've got home games. They've got Nashville, Minnesota again, and then they finish off with a Sunday matchup, 5 p.m. Pacific time against the Winnipeg Jets, the team we were just talking about in at the number nine slot. Taking a look at team stats, getting it done by committee. Burkowski, Schwartz, Beniers. Beniers really having a solid year right now. A candidate for the Calder Trophy Rookie of the Year for sure. Uh, Jared McCann, Brandon Tanev, Vince Dunn. Everly Sprung, they've been getting it done across the board. Defense has been great in their own D zone as well. Forwards getting back, heads are on a swivel, winning the puck battles in the corners, breaking it out pretty cleanly, entering the zone nicely. Again, tic-tac-toe plays, winning face-offs. They're doing everything right that you're able to do to win hockey games. So look out for them as we move forward. But the goaltending, Martin Jones, he's got a 261 with a 901 save percentage. Not the Best of stats, but if he can at least be pretty consistent around that number, he can be a big help between the pipes for the Kraken. Will Shane, I haven't done a little more research on this, but will Shane Wright be able to crack it? Or I believe he might have been sent back to juniors. I don't know. I think he hasn't played enough games to determine that just yet. But who knows? Let me know what you guys think, what they should do with Shane Wright. Should they send him back to juniors or keep him up with the big squad? But as of right now, They don't really need them. They're playing great hockey with the team that they've got, and they are good enough to crack our number eight spot for the top 10 power rankings this week. Next up on my list for top 10 in at number seven, I believe this is the first time that they have been on my list all year long. Eastern Conference Atlantic Division have been playing solid hockey. The Detroit Red Wings in at number seven. Now you might say, well, Duster, they got killed at the start of the week. Yes, they did. They got killed by the Buffalo Sabres who've been in and out of my top 10 who are a decent hockey team at times, but then other times they look like the Buffalo Sabres of old. Other than that little blunder this past week, they did beat the Washington Capitals. They did beat the New York Islanders who were in our top 10 last week, and they did beat the New York Rangers on Sunday night in overtime. So they went 3-1 and one for the week, a very solid week. And if we look at the standings, they're in second place in a tough Atlantic division above Toronto, above Tampa, above Florida, just behind the Boston Bruins by a couple of games, which, again, Boston being one of the top teams in the league, have been on a little bit of a run until they lost to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Detroit getting it done. Top players doing top things. Kubalik actually a little bit of a surprise this year of being a top player echelon player points wise 15 points for Kubalik Dylan Larkin the captain leading by example 15 points for him Peron Haronik Rasmussen Lucas Raymond a little quiet Andrew Kopp has been catching on the last couple of games as well that I've noticed between the pipes Nedeljkovic hasn't been the best but Vili Husso coming over from the St. Louis Blues has been pretty decent a 186 Goals against average with an even better 941 save percentage. That is top notch stats. If he can continue to do that, and the Red Wings are able to put the puck in the back of the net more often than not, which again, they have been doing. If you take a look at their past few games three goals, three goals, three goals. I think even in their loss to Buffalo, they had three goals. So if they can continue to keep doing that, Look out for the Red Wings. They are definitely a force to be reckoned with in the Atlantic Division with teams not doing as well, such as Florida, Tampa, Buffalo, Montreal, even Ottawa. They were Ottawa's our last pick in for the wild card. They're doing pretty decent. They've got a plus two goal differential. Home team stats, they are a tough home team to play against. Five, one, and one on home ice. So look out for the Red Wings as the season moves on, but we've got them in at number seven. Coming in at number six, as you guys probably could have seen on those last couple of pages, we've got the surging Toronto Maple Leafs above the Detroit Red Wings. Man, oh man, seeing them in person was great. They're a scrappy team. I honestly think that they should have had a They should have had no business winning that game yesterday in Carolina, but they found a way to get it done. And when your team is 
having that success, even when you're not playing great, finding ways to win hockey games, that's what makes a good team go deep into the season, making a playoff push, making a run to get up in standings. The top players are playing top, top notch. John Tavares, captain, leading by example, 15 points. Marner, 14 points. Matthew catching fire as of late. He's got 13. Nylander's got 13. Riley's got 9. So your top players that you're paying top dollars for are getting it done. They're finding ways. There have been a few turnovers here and there and, and bad play in the D zone, turning the puck over, not looking, not back checking, being a little lazy. But the games that they're playing on, they look good. They beat Boston the other night 2-1 in an absolute barn burning game. Sam Sonoff did go down with injury and he's been put on IR. But they've got Calgary and Matt Murray is potentially on his way back. So who knows with that goaltending situation with Sam Sonoff. It's such a shame that he got hurt. Some decent stats, a 2-2-3 with a 9-2-1 being a pretty solid brick wall back there for the Leafs. Looking at their schedule this past week, they beat the Flyers 5-2. They beat the Bruins 2-1. They beat Carolina 3-1. And they've got some big games at home, a nice three-game homestand this upcoming week. If they can at least go 2-1 in those games, look out for the Leafs to be on my top 10 next week, but they've got the Golden Knights, Penguins, and Vancouver. So uh, one tough game and two kind of patty cake games, so they should at least go 2-1. and one. If they lose to Vegas, I wouldn't be shocked, but they should be able to handle the Penguins and Vancouver Canucks to continue on as the standings look. If they can win two out of the three games this week, they'll be up there at 20 points battling for the Bruins, depending on what they do this week as well. But they're on a three-game heater. If they can keep it up with their top guys doing what they're doing, and find some goaltending from Calgren, and if Matt Murray can get healthy, I don't know if he's going to be back this week or not, but if Calgren can at least keep the dam from breaking, look out for the Leafs as they continue to go up the standings this week, but they're in the top 10 at number 6. Coming in in front of the Leafs at number 5, the team that they actually just lost to last night, or the Leafs beat last night, the Carolina Hurricanes coming in at number 5. They've had a solid week this past week, 3-1. and one. They beat the Washington Capitals in a shootout, and then when we take a look at the week, they beat Tampa Bay, they beat Buffalo, and they did lose to Toronto. That game, they just did not look very... They didn't look in sync. They looked out of sync. They were getting beat on 50-50 pucks. Just goals that shouldn't be going in found a way into the back of the net. And they just got outwilled that game against Toronto. But they've got a big week coming up. Florida, Edmonton, Colorado, three teams that are potential playoff teams. If they can go at least 2-1 and one this week as well. Like I said about the Toronto Maple Leafs, this could be a big week for the Carolina Hurricanes. But stat line-wise... Man, Nishis getting it done. Aho, Svechnikov again. Your top guys getting it done. That is a good sign for things to come as well. As if they can stay healthy, that is going to be a big help because you got Father Patches, Max Patch already coming back later this year. And if you can just continue to be on a roll, getting points, Brett Burns, Jarvis, Shea, Tara Vinan's been a little quiet, more quiet than I thought he would be, but he needs to step it up a little bit more. Gold. Gold tending one of the better tandems in the league, Ranta and Anderson. Uh, Anderson looked pretty decent last night, although giving up some goals. But Ranta actually leading stat li- stat wise, 905, and a 242 goals against average. So if their goal tending can produce a little bit more for them, and they can get more goals from Jarvis and Tara Vinan, look out for the Canes to be a contender. Continuing in that tough Metro division, 17 points right now. They're sitting there second in the division. They did lose to the Leafs, but before that, they were on a pretty decent heater. Big week coming up, but we've got the Canes in at number five. Coming in at number four, a solid team that has surprised everybody in the Metro division. Just above the Carolina Hurricanes, we've got the New Jersey Devils in at number four. This past week, they beat Vancouver, they beat Edmonton, and they beat the Calgary Flames on their Western Canada Tour. This upcoming week, they've got Calgary, Ottawa, and Arizona. You should go 2-1. Uh, you got a matchup against Calgary, who you just beat this pa- previous Saturday in Calgary, so look for a potential revenge game there for the Flames. So if you go 2-1, and one, could potentially stay on top of the division after a solid week. Their goal differential, plus 13. They're on a six-game winning streak. Man, they are a tough-looking team. Jesper Brat getting it done. 17 points. Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, Miles Wood, Dougie Hamilton, uh, Mercer, 
uh, McLeod, Moreno. You're getting it done from a lot of people. And in between the pipes, Vanacek has been playing great. 2-2-1. Goals against average, only with a 9.08 save percentage, so he could pick it up in that aspect. But that also has a lot to do with not only just him, but the defense in front of him. They need to shore it up a little bit more in the D zone, less turnovers. and They are a younger team, so that is bound to happen. But if they can continue to get production from their top guys, Brat, Heischer, and Hughes, man, look out for the New Jersey Devils being a surprise potential playoff team this upcoming season. We will see them more and more in the top 10 as, as well, as long as they don't fall apart we will see them again in the top 10 but we've got them at number four coming in at number three this week they are a leader in their division and it is the dallas stars of the central division having a three and O week they were able to take care of the la kings arizona coyotes and even the edmonton oilers the streaking edmonton oilers 6-2 on saturday Saturday, they've got a big week coming up. Winnipeg, San Jose, and Philly. They should go 2-1. and one. Again, another team that we're saying should go 2-1 and one this week. Again, top dogs getting it done. Their top line of Robertson, Hintz, and Pavelski. 18 points, 16, and 12. Jamie Benn actually stepping up in a big way as well. He's got 11 points. Tyler Sagan getting it done as well. Haskinen with 8 points leads the entire defensive core with that you've got wide johnson rookie five points and then jake ottinger a 1-4-0 goals against average and a save percentage of a 9-5-2 if he can continue that and their forwards continuing to produce we will see the dallas stars back up on this list but we've got them again mr consistent at number three for the top 10 power rankings this week coming in at number two for me this week they were able to bump up a few spots and reclaim number two and that is the vegas golden knights a very solid week for them they started off by beating the winnipeg jets one nothing in overtime able to then work their way into November, beating the Washington Capitals, beating the Edmonton or the Ottawa Senators, and beating the Montreal Canadiens. Now, again, some of those teams being a little bit lackluster, but they've been winning games, finding a way to win multiple different ways. They've got big games this upcoming week, away at Toronto, away at Buffalo, and then home against St. Louis. That Toronto game will be a fun one to watch, 4 p.m. Eastern time, Tuesday night. But points-wise, man, Jack Eichel, Stevenson, Marcia Show, Carlson, Stone, Smith, Petrangelo, Shea, Theodore, they're getting it done by committee, and their goaltending, a combined very solid goaltending effort. Logan Thompson, a 201. Aiden Hill, a 217. Save percentage wise, you got a 934 and a 925, respectively, for Aiden Hill. Man, oh man, their goaltending is really helping them out. They've got solid D zone presence, clearing pucks in front of the net, taking sticks, winning 50 50 puck battles below the goal line. And offensively, they're super creative. They've got heavy shots out there, quick releases in your face run you over they've got those types of players and they are showing it they are leading their division in the pacific 22 points plus 19 goal differential on a seven game winning streak man the vegas gold knights are a tough team and are a stanley cup contender i know where we are still pretty early at this stage in being able to determine those things but they are a cup contender i expect to see them in our top 10 throughout the year but that's why we've got vegas at number two coming in at number one they continue to be number one even though they did lose they lost to a toronto maple leafs team who we are high on this week sixth in the power rankings but it is the boston bruins continuing to be at number one they were on a about i believe six game winning streak before they lost to toronto they beat the rangers they beat the penguins and then on previously they had beaten columbus detroit dallas minnesota anaheim they were on a heater five game heater until or seven game heater sorry until they lost to Toronto on Saturday night. As of the filming of this, their game is just starting against St. Louis, so they've got a big week ahead. St. Louis, Calgary, Buffalo, Vancouver. You should go 3-1, and one, and if they do that, they will continue to be on the top of the standings in the Eastern Conference and potentially the league 21-goal differential. Again, that game against the Leafs was a tough, hard-fought battle. Pasternak, 19 points. Lindholm, Lind, Lindholm, 
the biggest surprise of their team this year. 13 points, Bergeron 10, DeBrusque with 9, Taylor Hall with 9, Krejci with 8, so on and so forth. Allmark getting it done between the pipes, 2-1-6 with a 9-2-9 save percentage. That is awesome stuff. If they can continue to get that from him and continue to play solid hockey in front of him, expect the Boston Bruins to stay at the top of the league standings and be a cup contender this season. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments of this top 10 video. Who do you think should be in? Who do you think should be out? Do we get it wrong on a couple of teams? Let me know down in the comments. But if you are new to the channel and you've made it to this point in the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are growing like crazy, and I cannot thank you guys enough for the love and support. There will be a few more videos coming out this week, but that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.